Lord, be glorified in our midst, oh Lord. Jesus, Jesus, be thou glorified. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Oh, be glorified in the heavens. Lord, be glorified in the earth. Lord, be glorified in our midst, oh Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Be thou glorified, Jesus, 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 be thou glorified. Hallelujah. There's a song that's in my heart. Be magnified, O Lord, and give me blessed to You are highly exalted, and there is nothing you can do, O Lord. Our eyes are on you. Be magnified, oh Lord. Be magnified. Be magnified, oh Lord. Be magnified, oh Lord. You were highly exalted, and there is nothing you can do. Oh Lord, our eyes are on you. Be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. I have made you too small in my eyes. Oh, Lord, forgive me, and I have responded to men instead of your love and your mercy. But now, oh Lord, I see my wrong. Heal my heart and show yourself strong. And in my eyes and with my song, oh Lord, be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. Magnified, oh Lord, be magnified. My God, whoa, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, precious Holy Ghost. 
Thank you for blessing us with that. Thank you for the presence of God, the soothing nature of His presence. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Come and lift your voice and bless the name of the Lord. Let's worship. Let's praise. Let's give Him glory. Let's give Him honor. Lift your voice or mute your mics if you can and just thank Him and glorify the Lord. Glorify the Lord. Glorify the Lord. Kishiki Benekosia. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Give you glory and we give you praise. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Um, have you been blessed thus far by the series? Yes, sir. We've been blessed thus far. Very serious. Sylvester, which Sylvester is this? Our Jehovah. Wow, <laughs> today is a good day. <laughs> good to have you, brother. Good to have you. It's been a while. You're welcome. God bless you. Um, We've been, we've been dealing with faith in the series, you know, thus far, after all these um, weeks. I think this is our fifth Bible study on the subject of faith. I'm sure, you know, uh, many of us, we, we know that faith extends, but, you know, as at the time the Lord said, do faith for a month, I had no clue how far we're going to go. So I was just following the Holy Ghost you know, the way he was leading. And I'm so glad that we've explored the different facet of faith. Um, anybody in particular has uh, picked something uh, from the series that we have taught on the faith, faith that pleases God, you know, the, the, the faith itself. Anybody, anybody received anything so far? Something that has shifted your perspective? Uh, yeah, thank you, man. Um, anybody received something? Of, anybody? Are we, am I alone today? Can you hear me clearly? Yes. Okay. Okay. Today we'll be we'll be touching on the first on the last aspect on uh, the series, which is um, the uh, what's it called? The enemies of faith enemies of faith, the things that um, took your faith, that don't allow your faith work. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, today, I was in prayer, and um, the Holy Ghost uh, started to speak to me about the enemies of faith. So he just give, gave me the uh, the talking point on it. I, I didn't know what we we're going to deal with today, but um, I think on Monday, that's when that happened. The Lord said we need to address this matter so that we are we understand the things that have come to attack our faith. Praise God. So um, the first thing that attacks our faith is doubt. Doubt. Praise God. 
first thing that attacks our faith is doubt. Confirm to me if you hear me clearly again, so that as I just proceed, then I just know. That we, we can hear you. Okay. People are not responding to me today. All right. And today we're, 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 we have double session, so I have to hurry up and close so that you guys can take over. Timmy Lane, say amen. <laughs> amen. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Okay. Praise God. So let's go. Uh, Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14 from verse 26. The enemies of faith. The first item that the Holy Spirit listed to me was doubt. Matthew chapter 14. Let me read from verse 24, just for context. But the sheep was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves. For the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. So this was the story where Jesus walked on water. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. It is a ghost to our other people. It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway, Jesus speak unto them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. One of the other fears, one of the other enemies of faith is fear. I'm going to come back to that, to fear, but see what God said. They were afraid when they saw uh, Jesus walking on water and he said, be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. Praise God. Verse 28, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. If it is you, Lord, ask me to come join you. The man was not thinking that what if it's not Jesus and they just want to deceive me and I now enter water and die. He didn't think like that. If it is you, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. Now let's pause there for a minute. Many times in our journeys, in our walk with God, the essence, I've told you when one of, one of this series here, the essence of walking with God, the reason why you do what it is you do is the, based on the principle of faith. If God has not spoken a word, what is your faith anchored on? Your anchor must be upon God's word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of the Lord. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of the Lord. So Jesus said to Peter, come. And then his words come be, became the solid, um, it became the solid, uh, what's it called? Solid surface where he was walking on the water. Many times we do things that are impossible to people. And the reason why we succeed at it is because God has set us to do it. Anybody tries to do the same thing without receiving the word of God, they struggle. They don't survive. So what is the essence of you doing what you do? God said, God said, many people have tried, you know, um, You've heard the story of somebody going to the lion's den. Say, I want to do what Daniel did in Nigeria. The lion that has not eaten for many months said, Jesus, I thank you. You are still a provider. And they chopped that man, chopped his bones. Why? God did not speak. Why were they trying to do, you know, what they saw somebody did? Hallelujah. Amen? Are we together? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My house is too quiet today, my God. Where are my people? <laughs> Praise God. So Jesus said, come. And then he started to come. And he said, and Peter was come down out of the ship. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. So he was already walking. <coughs> Excuse me. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. 
Lord, save me. Many things are coming to my spirit, man. I'm trying to stay focused on this um, scripture. Lord, save me. That's what he cried. Lord, save me. Right? And then immediately, <coughs> excuse me, immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said to him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Why did you doubt? That was Jesus' response. Doubt was the reason why the man started to sink. Doubt was the reason why he was sinking. What happened first? Fear. So fear should actually come first in the hierarchy of this thing. He saw the wind. Remember, I've told you, whatsoever you behold, you become. He looked at the contrary information to what Jesus had spoken concerning him. Fear came unto him. Fear is usually the first thing that comes to you. Fear in the spiritual things, fear, the spirit of fear leads the pack. So if you're going to be possessed, the spirit of fear stands in front. Fear opens the door. The same way faith opens the door, fear opens the door. It opens the door and causes other things to come in. That's why when an angel appears to you in the glory, and then you see, the first thing they say to you is, fear not. Praise God. Are we together? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They say, fear not. Why? Because fear is from the enemy. Fear is from the devil. The fear that we have with, with the Lord is a reverential fear, not this fear that causes torment. Praise Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 <laughs> First John chapter 4, verse 18. First John chapter 4, verse 18. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casted out fear, because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. There is no fear in love. There is absolutely no fear in love. That's why God's spirit, when it comes, when the angels come, the saints come, when Jesus comes, Fear not is what he said. When Jesus was walking on the water and then the disciples saw him, they were afraid and he quickly cautioned them, fear not, it is I. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casted out fear. So when fear grips you, the angel quickly comes and cast out that fear saying, fear not, it is I. But demon spirits, they, they thrive in your fear. They feed off your fear. How many of you know, uh, you've seen dogs, some dogs, when they see you, when they sense that you are afraid of them, oh, they will make jest of you. They will make a mockery out of you. I remember when I was younger, uh, the, um, when, I was, when, when I was much younger, I was walking you know, on the road and then I saw a dog. And then the dog <laughs> just made some moves on me. The dog just took like two, three steps. One, two, three. Mm, I took off. I ran as fast as my legs could carry me. And when I got down the road, I, I, I could feel that the dog was not chasing me anymore. I turned back to see. Guess what? The dog did not move from where it was. It just gave me that one, two, three. and was watching me. Immediately, I turned back to see. Then the dog was saying, see this big fool. Immediately, I turned back to just to we, we saw each other, then the dog turned and walked away. And I felt very stupid. I was running based on the imagination that the dog was chasing me. So when the dog sees that you fear it, it will begin to threaten you to get more fear. But when it tries, it comes at you and you are not moving. He said, this one, this one's so deep. Likewise, demonic spirits, demon spirits like to, you know, scare you. They, they like to come in form of different things with noises and, uh, you know, but when you have come of age, when you mature in the things of God, 
you know, you just look at them and the, the greatest thing you can do to them that will upset them is to ignore them. Is to do what? Ignore them. Just ignore them. Don't even pay them mind, you know. But if you're still growing in the faith, then you play the blood and all those things, you know. But we've come to the place where sometimes where they are doing something, you all look at them and shake your head and, and go back to sleep. If the demon will be shocked. Say, am I not scary again? It will go to the mirror and say, wow, but I'm scary now. Then they will now go to some other people that are still fearful and they just do one shakara and those ones will be afraid. They say, hey, I still got it. You know, but if you are still fearful of these things, it shows that you have some uh, time. You still have some work to do to develop yourself. So fear is the opposite of faith. Fear is the what? Opposite of faith. So likewise, faith comes by hearing. Fear also comes by hearing as well. Hallelujah. Fear, what have you heard? What did they tell you? Especially when they start to tell you that, oh, this, this is the spirit that killed this person. Oh, is this is the is the is the thing that um uh, or this is what happened to this person. They did not survive it. This thing happened to... Do you get what I'm talking about? They are, they are trying to feed your mind. Many people that are suffering from depression, once they feed, allow those demon spirit whisper these things. Let me give you a perfect picture of how it starts. So you start to think, oh, but my life is not moving forward. Immediately that thought starts. Another train of thought will come again. It's true. All my friends are married. I'm not yet married. Another thought come is true. Why is it only me? Out of every other person, I'm the only one. Why, why, why are things so bad for me? Different things start to flow. Let me tell you what begins to happen. When you begin to see that happen to you, those are demons. It attracts negative thoughts, attract demons to you. Amen? Negative thoughts attract demons to you. Negative thought attracts demons. So they start to whisper those words, and then suddenly the light will not be too bright for you. Why? Because they don't like light. That's why depressed people like to stay in dark rooms. Am I talking to somebody here? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Depressed people like to stay in dark rooms so that the demons can find full expression. Hallelujah. Angels don't stay hang around negative people. They don't have the affinity to hang around. It's, it's, it, it turns them off. They just, uh, praise God. Very, very, very important Hallelujah. to note this. So when you see thoughts start to come and it starts to amplify, quickly address it because you know what is going on. Amen. First Corinthians, uh, Second Timothy, chapter one, verse seven. Second Timothy, chapter one, verse seven. For God had not given us the spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. So, what does this statement tell you? Everything that's working with you or working in your life is what was given. So you have the responsibility to take it or reject it. God has not given you the spirit of fear. Why are you walking in fear? God has not given you the spirit of fear. Why are you walking in fear? Why have you received what God has not given? Remember I told you, if it is not revealed, it cannot be received. The enemy also comes because it's a spiritual law and reveals fear to you. And then you receive it, and then you start to have heart palpitations. For God has not given you the spirit of fear. So push back the spirit of fear. So can you say right now, say, I reject the spirit of fear. I reject the spirit of fear. But of I power. He hasn't given you the spirit of fear. What he has given you is a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. See, God gave you three spirits to counter one. God gave you three spirits 
to counter one spirit, just to show you that many people are crippled by fear, fear of the unknown. The only fear you are permitted to walk in is the fear of God. Am I communicating with my people today? The only fear yes, you are sir. permitted to walk in is the fear of God. And that fear comes from the perfection of love. Perfect fear, perfect love casts out fear. There is no fear in love. But the love that you have for the Father is the fear that you have for him is reverential fear. Not fear of you are afraid. I saw a post that really blessed me. In the world, when you sin against your father, you run away from him. In the kingdom, when you sin against your father, you run to him. Because his love will embrace you. Hallelujah. His love will embrace you. Perfect love cast out fear. And God is telling you, I, the Lord, has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, of a sound mind. Why? Because fear attacks your mind. Fear attacks your mind. It, it goes straight for your mind. It goes straight to your mind. It attacks your mind. So God gives you a sound mind. Hallelujah. He hasn't given you this. So stop receiving it. So I told you how it works out. The enemy just comes and starts to whisper in your, your ears. And then the moment you receive it, then it begins to multiply. The moment you receive it, it begins to do what? Multiply. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Philippians Amen. chapter 4, verse 8. We're still dealing with fear. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Somebody with an amazing voice, please read. Philippians 4, 8. Anybody? We have good network, read. Hello, anybody? <laughs> okay. Um, got it? Oh. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, goodness. Jackie, Eight. go ahead. Um, keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real, honorable mm. and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind. And mm. fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, mm. praising him always. Amazing. Praise God. What translation is that? Um, TPT, the yeah, passion, passion translation. Amazing. Amazing. You see that? Let me read from verse 7 to give you context. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. And then he gives a further instruction. Finally, brothers, whatsoever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent, whatsoever things are of good report, whatever things are lovely, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. I repeat, think on these things. And they went further. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Think on these things. Your thoughts are very important. Many of you think that your thoughts just come. No, they are constantly opposing forces that are constantly whispering thoughts into your spirit mind. It comes like a suggestion. I want to ask a question so quickly on mute your mic and answer this question. How many of you have had the thoughts to give somebody a gift, you know, to send somebody money? The thought just came send this person money and start to think about it. And then you send the money. Has it happened to you? Yes or no? Anybody? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. 
Second question, has, has, has that thought come to you? And then another thought said, no, don't give this person money. Yes or no? Yes. 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 So where was that voice coming from? The voice was coming from two opposing forces. Two opposing Oh, brethren, look, one of the things that you learn here is spiritual intelligence about activities of the spirit so that you can know what's going on. Let's, let me show you a proof. Let's go to Esther chapter 6. Let me quickly show you a proof. You know, we're still in the spirit of fear. Esther chapter 6. To one of my pastors in the past, say the book of Esther is still in the Old Testament. It was not promoted. It wasn't uh, elevated. You know, suppose look for it in Revelations. Hallelujah. Verse one. I read. On that night, could not the king sleep, and he commanded. On that night, could not the king sleep, and he commanded. to bring the book of records of the chronicles and they were read before the king. On that night, could not what? The king sleep. And let's, 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 this is Bible study, let's talk. You are a king and you can't sleep. Uh, let me ask somebody here, who should I ask this question? Jackie, you read uh, previous scripture. Let me ask you a question. Jackie, are you there? Yes. You have a billion dollars in your account and you are not able to sleep. What would be your response? What, what would you do when you wake up and you can't sleep? Remember, you are not born again. You, are, you can do anything you, you want to do. What, 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 what would you do when you wake up? Good question. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. The king had no limitations. He was not a righteous king. So as a king, maybe I should have asked the man that question. They'll give you six answers. <laughs> okay, Kyrie, you can answer. Uh, Kelvin, Kelvin, go ahead and answer from my clubhouse. Yeah. yeah. But people will go to drugs, yeah. And you said something else, I didn't get that. Yes, different things. Yes. Thank you. Spa, thank you, Tony. He said that they would get a massage. Get if it's like a bros David, he will get the youngest dancer. Come and massage my body. Does it make sense that a king that could not sleep, he woke up and asked for the book of records? Let me tell you what was happening. The angels were rocking to sleep. The book of records, the book of records, the book of records, the book of records. The book of records, the book of records. And he yielded to that thought. Immediately he woke up, was like, ah, I can't sleep. Get me the book of records. To him, it looked like an idea of his, but it was whispered to him. Oh, it was whispered to him. Why? Something was about to happen to a man. And it was found, written, that Mordecai had told the big Sana and Teresh, two of the king's family, and the keeper, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hands on the king, Ahasuerus. And the king said, what honor and dignity had been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servant that ministered unto him, there is nothing done for him. It was time for this man's promotion, and he was sleeping. Look, there are prayer points. <laughs> uh, when it's time for the book of records to be opened for you, you can't sleep, sir. I'm sorry, you can't sleep. <laughs> the angels were ministering to the king and then immediately woke up, he opened it. You know, I'm not going to the book of Esther. That's story for another day. But that tells you, Tony, you say shopping, shopping from sleep. Ah, 
your billion dollars. I know where you spend it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. The angels were ministering. So that tells you your thoughts. So you want to bless somebody. The idea comes to you. Well, angel ministers, why don't you bless this person, this uh, friend of yours? You know, that is probably going through something. You know, and then you're thinking about it. You say, that's true. I need to do so. Then another voice, a contrary voice. They don't do it, you know. You know that that's how they do. You know, you know the next day they won't appreciate you. They'll start calling you and asking you for more. You know, different voices that contradict. Ah, if you understand this truth, you won't be victims anymore. In the name of Jesus, praise God. So, perfect love cast out fear. That's where I was. Think on these things. So when you start to think on positive thoughts. Think on the things of the spirit. Think, think of the love of God. Like David in Psalm 63, you start to meditate. You say, upon my bed, I meditate on the wonders of God, the love of God. I, I, I think on, I, my heart yearns after you. My, my, I long for you. Angels are attracted. Then angels start to whisper to you the goodness of God, the glory of God. The faithfulness of God. Remember the last time when you are about to, you know, go through some challenges, how God came through for you. Oh, then you say, yes, that's true. I praise you, God. Another angel will come and whisper. Say, remember your family. See what you have all gone through. See the goodness of God in your family. See his faithfulness. See his word over your household. Then the same thing, praises start to expand in your heart. Have you experienced that? The same way depression multiplies by sad stories. That's the same way when you start to think on good things, it starts to amplify. It attracts angels. And when angels are gathering in a place and another angel is flying by, he wants to know why people gathering there. He will come. And then when he sees what's going on, he will contribute. Think on these things. And then you will see that your mood changes. You are no longer sad, depressed. Even though you are still expecting some things and it's not yet working out. You are hopeful that my God will make things happen. Joy is the fruit of the spirit. My brother Kyle dealt with the other day. Joy. With joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. So when the enemy wants to steal something from you, he doesn't have the capacity to steal the things directly. He steals your joy. Why is joy a fruit of the spirit? Because the angels are ministering to you. Then you are joyful. You are not happy. Happiness is a function of uh, happenings. But joy is a fruit of the spirit. With joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. So you see, the, the reason why this knowledge is important for you so that you understand when you suddenly catch yourself off guard, start to think some bad things, how bad things have been, just know what's going on. They are starting to gather. Then you, in the name of Jesus, I disperse every foul spirit here. You have no room here. By the power of the Holy Ghost, this body is the temple of the spirit. The angels surround. I give God glory because he's faithful. I give him praise because he's worthy to be glorified. And suddenly, Talking points for praise start to surround your heart. Talking points for praise. Before you know what, two hours are gone, you are praising God. But if you say it's true, that's true. Everybody just testifying. When will he even get to my tongue? Hmm. Then they start to gather and say, we have seen a candidate here. Let us tell how bad things are. Let us tell him how bad things are. Are we? Is somebody getting something? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. So that you know that ah, then when you are also praying, you can also declare that people remember you for favor. Your angels go and whisper to somebody's heart. Ah, let me not touch that because there's a way, the same way the thought enter somebody's entered your heart, it has entered somebody's heart to bless you. But if the voice, the the if the person is not yielded to God. May be difficult for them to really succumb to the will, but there's a way to manipulate that. I'll teach that another day. Praise God. So, fear is very, is a, it, it goes against faith. So, Peter saw 
amongst the other disciples saw Jesus walking on the water and they were afraid, fear. But Jesus quickly quenched that fear. Don't be afraid, it is I. Be of good cheer. Be joyful, it is I. Ali Amanakoba. Be joyful, it is I. Don't be afraid. And Peter said, Lord, if it is you, ask me to come on water. That's a man of faith speaking. And he said, come. And Peter came out of the ship, walked on water to go to Jesus. Then he changed his focus. He wasn't focusing on the Lord anymore. He said, when he saw the wind boisterous, he saw the wind boastful, the, the, he saw the waves. I don't blame him because I told you what you focus on, you become. Mm -hmm. You focus on the wind, you become doubtful. Mm -hmm. You focus on Jesus, you become faithful. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounded nice. Faithful, full of faith. Big question. Did he not see the wind, the storm, when he stepped out? He saw it, but he took eyes off it and looked onto Jesus. Looking onto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He looked to him and was walking, was coming. And then he, he checked out. You've seen these people that walk on this high, uh, I don't know why you just leave the earth and go to the sky and say, you want to walk on thin rope, you know? And then they tell you, don't look down, don't look down, don't look down, they are struggling. They want to just look down, you are going down the street. Hallelujah. Once you look down. Amen. You are going straight down because your focus, what you focus on is what attracts you. Jesus. And then he looked at the wind. Fear him. The first voice that came is, ah, this water, if you go down, you are finished. You are going straight down to the bottom. You are, you are like some of us. Some of us are like uh, uh, Aku, you know, that is, some of us are like stone. Immediately we enter water, we are going down to the bottom. You know, some of us are skillful in swimming, but some cannot. Then those ideas came. See, ah, death by drowning is a very painful death. All those ideas started to flood him and he started to go down. He cried to Jesus. Why did Jesus not say, I am Jesus? Stop sinking now. I command you to stop sinking. No, he would have drowned in front of Jesus. The Bible says, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. He quickly stretched to catch this man and said to him, Oh, ye of little faith, you are about to make history. The first man that walked on water with me. Why did you doubt? Why? So at the time you receive a prophetic word, your faith is, is on point. You are everywhere saying, God is able to do what God is able to do. And then the first sign of a challenge. They start to doubt. Ah, are you sure God can still do? Is God still on the throne? Is God still able? Hallelujah. Are we together? Is God yes, still sir. able? Is God still able? Doubts come. Then the country says, ah, you know, dollar is now six billion to a naira. And they were like, ah, we are finished. What did God say? One thing I need you to remember, and don't forget if you forget anything, God, nothing catches God by surprise. God did not speak to you, and then something happens, then God says, oh, my God, I shouldn't have said this. God does not operate that way. When God speaks to you, he speaks because he knows what's coming. He speaks because he has seen the end from the beginning. And he gives you a sure word. And you hold on to that word, knowing whether rain or storm. He said the heavens and the earth will pass away, but his word will never pass away. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think. He's able to do what? Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or think. That is the ability and capacity of God. 
He's able to deliver. He's able to show forth his message towards you. He's not limited by the things that you think he's limited by. God is not surprised about Corona, COVID-19. God did not say, oh my God, what will I do now? <laughs> when he speaks a word over you, be rest assured, you can take that word to the bank that he will deliver on his promise. But fear of the situation, fear of, their, of, of things happening around. And then when God speaks to you that you are strong and healthy, then your stomach starts to ache. Your leg starts to pain. You start to feel heavy. You say, ah, and then the first thing you do is Google. What are the symptoms of constant headache? And the Google will tell you cancer of the mind. And they say, hey, it is finished. Many of us here, you know, I know you are laughing at yourself now. When, you know, when the COVID uh, stuff was spreading everywhere, and then you just have a little cough and you have diarrhea. The first thing, symptoms of COVID-19. If you did not do it, let me hear your voice. <laughs> 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 symptoms of COVID. In fact, you'll be looking for your symptom there. You say, why, why is my symptom not here? You will check or say, this people don't know what they are. You are look, what you are looking for, you'll find it. You know, here of Job. Job said, what I greatly fear has happened to me. What I greatly fear. Is that real? Go and check Google, you'll find your answer. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. What you should be focusing on, what does God say? What is his word saying? Hey, what does his word tell you? That's why, you know, while, you know, I, I, I respect a lot of people that, you know, watch the news and CNN is a devilish station. Don't watch it. Um, why I respect people that watch, try to keep tabs on the news. I rather keep tap on the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I rather keep tap. Uh, one of the times where I set aside some time to pray, some very long hours of prayer, you know, for the first time, my phone was, you know, on airplane mode for over 12 hours. That would never happen in, in as long as I can remember. You know, so I wasn't connected to anything happening. I was fellowshipping with the Holy Ghost and, you know, in prayer. And then Lord started to speak some things to me. And so by the time I was done with the first uh, round of 12 hours, you know, so I came out with so much faith and, you know, just glorifying God. And so all I was focused on was what he said to me or what he had shared with me. And then, um, so I, I turned on my phone when I was done with that, you know, and then I received a message, all these uh, messages of, you know, you know, uh, the world is about to come to an end because of how bad things are. Immediately I saw it, my I re, my spirit man rejected this. I'm like, don't, don't, don't contradict me. I pushed it away. That was my, my natural reflection. My reflex action was push it away like, oh, I'm, I'm not on this level. Am I communicating? Why? Yes, sir. I'm yes, sir. Not from a height. I've just heard God. Man cannot now tell me was oh, uh, you know, breaking news. Breaking news. I get my breaking news from the Spirit because His own news is critical. But once we operate in the realm of the flesh, we are stuck on these things. You know, the information keeps hitting us here and there. We spent billions of dollars to to market. COVID. They spent billions. Last year it was so bad. Every news station knew number of deaths. Even that the fact that the number of deaths were so low that there are many other common things that kill people more than that. But they amplified it so much that many people died of fear and not of the sickness. Many people did what? Died of fear. Because they understand this principle. So they project their fears on you. They project their fears on you. Every TV station, you know how much it takes to put those news. Somebody was paying for it. Nobody would do it for free. These stations are business stations. 
somebody was paying for it. Round the clock, everywhere you turn, death. 500 deaths, 1,000 deaths in a global population of 6 billion. We're afraid of 1 million deaths. Whereas people die every day from common things. Am I communicating? What was the enemy trying to do? To inject such fear in you. We've been sick of worse things and we've survived it. For some people, once they catch COVID, like, ah, my life is over. That's what the devil wants. Fear has torment. Fear has what? Torment. Amen. That's why your focus must be on what is God saying. Even though for common knowledge, you need to be aware of what's going on around you. Let your major focus come from the word of God. Let's, let's explore. Um, to me, uh, you're my timekeeper for today. Don't let me shoot off, off, off track. There's just things are just opening up. Try and explore. Let's explore. Why do you think David could fight Goliath? Why? Simple. He did not grow up in the community. He was shielded from the protection of parents. If he was under motherly care, when a dog is on rampage, the mother would have taken him here and told him about how dangerous the dog is. Don't go out when you see a mad dog. Hello, am I communicating today? Yes, sir. Don't go out schooling him. Every child is born fearless. Why? The realm of the spirit, where they're coming from, there's no fear. So they fly, they go underwater. That's why you see a child will walk in a balcony of 15 stories and just be smiling and walking around. Walking around smiling. Well, you the mom are like, ah, we're about to die. Why? They don't have fear. We are the ones that teach them fear. We limit them from the capacity they come from. So David's mom would have shielded him. His father would have kept him, locked the door. Won't be tired that there is a lion on rampage. Ah! Then the father will sit them down and tell you how dangerous the lion is. You will watch Nat Joy and see how the lion devours an animal. Once you have seen those kind of things, the day you meet a lion face to face, your picture is already, your memory starts to serve you the picture of what the lion did to a goat. I say, I'm, me, I'm even easier than a goat. Am I communicating? So those things are what great limitations in our hearts. That's what Jesus came to teach against. He came to tell you about who you are in Christ. And people were wondering, well, is this guy normal? How can you be talking like this? So David did not have anybody to tell him lions were dangerous. There was nobody to show him that bears were very dangerous. He was just in the bush worshiping God. And then God was teaching him. God was speaking to him. So that was the only information. He was in the school of the spirit. God was the one teaching him. Telling him the, about the things that with God, nothing shall be impossible. God was telling him, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What? If the Lord is my shepherd, he protects me. I'm under his protection. Secondly, the, protect, the shepherd leads me beside still waters. He takes me to green pastures. He is responsible for my daily supply. I don't have to crack my head on how to make money. He directs me. Why? He's my shepherd. And then based on that relationship with God, when he faced a lion, he checked. God will not allow me to be destroyed. So why would I allow my sheep to be destroyed? He went after the lion and killed it. There was nobody to clap for him. There was nobody to tell him, don't go against the lion. It's dangerous. Nobody. He went after it, killed it. And he thought it was normal. The bear came, he killed it. He thought it was normal. And when he was walking as a young boy, uh, for some of you, you need to watch, um, what's this? Uh, what? Super book. And check David and Goliath. And, and what that state to give you a picture of what had transpired. David was a small boy. And then Goliath, this giant. People have heard the stories of Goliath. That's why all the soldiers were shaking. They were saying, this one, if he carries you, you are finished. So that was the stories they were feeding themselves. 
no soldier could go out and represent Israel. He was insulting the God of Israel. And a young boy came from the bush, came to check on his brothers and give them some supply. And then he saw this man. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine speaking against the God that I serve? I'm going after this man. And then they say, you, are, you started again. See this, your, 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 your foolishness. He went, he said, I can't do this now. And they went to the king. And the king was looking at him like, but the Lord gave conviction to the king to allow him go. And he was telling the king, we kill lion in our, you know, my private, uh, uh, where I relax. I killed lion, I killed bear. It's normal. I can take this guy. So, let's go. Let somebody go. Let them not say nobody came. And then, so, said, take my sword, take my shield. If not by sword and shield, why did you not go and use it, sir? <laughs> Uh, Jack, Jack, and uh, Jackie and Jess, let me interpret. If it's by the sword and the shield, why did Saul not go? And he rejected. He said, I've not tried this. I'm, I, I don't know this. I don't know this tool. What I know, what I've used in the secret, how I won my secret battles is what I'm used to. And then he went after. The Bible said he charged at the giant. Goliath was speaking words. He said, I will, I will feed you to the bed. Word of well, war of words. He too responded, you come to me with, me with, with sword and shield. I come in the name of the Lord. So David activated the name of Jesus many generations before Jesus came. I come in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And the angel said, you are not going on this journey alone. We go with you. If there was somebody to give him fear, fear lecture, David would not have gone on that battle. So many things that God has said concerning you, the limitation that you have, what you are going through, is what they have told you about people that tried it ahead of you and, and, and fear prevented them. How they told you that your parents in the house, they've tried to, to, to win this battle, they could not. Who are you? You think you can come? Say, my parents did not understand the mystery of faith. I understand. I come in the name of the Lord. Am I communicating to somebody here today? Yes, sir. I come in the name of the Lord. Fear is the number one enemy of faith. After fear, doubt is behind it. Jesus said, why did you doubt? You are already walking on the water. Why did you doubt? What causes doubt? Change of focus. Focus on him who has spoken. Abraham considered not the deadness of Sarah's womb. He was focused on he who has spoken. He knew that the integrity of this one, he is not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it? Will he not do it? He is the God that talks and does. He does not speak and changes his mind. He looked at the integrity of him who has spoken. If a billionaire gives you a check of $10 million, you will not doubt that this check will, 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 will clear. But if a man who is struggling to pay rent gives you $10 million, you first look at him. Are you, are you crazy? You look like you need $1,000. Praise God. Very critical. Doubt. What has God said concerning you that has not come to pass? Ah, let come and never near. Depends on where you stay. Stay with his word. Stay with him. See, that's why you study scripture. See that this God that gave a promise to Abraham for 25 years, he did not fail. He kept to his word. He brought his word to pass. Isaiah prophesied, a virgin shall come with a child. That does not make sense. That does not make sense. How can a virgin come with it? Even the prophet I was prophesying to, I'm sure when he was not speaking, he said, does this even make sense? But not in his lifetime. Many generations after, he showed up. The word of God came to pass. Not doubting. Romans chapter 4. Not doubting. 
He considered not the deadness of Sarah's womb. He stumbled not through unbelief. He was fervent in faith, giving glory to God. 25 years. Has your word lasted one year? And you are shaking the heavens. God, are you still on the throne? God, are you sure you have not been dethroned just because of perfect love cast out to you? Hallelujah. Anybody bless us? Yes, sir. Limitations. Doubt. Fear. Why did you doubt? Oh, you of little faith. So he calls doubt little faith. Cause what? Doubt, little faith. Let's go to James chapter 1. Let me show you something there. James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 6. James chapter 1, verse 6. Or let me just read from verse 5 for, for context. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraided not, and it shall be given to him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, nothing what? Wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the law. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let not that man think that he will receive anything from the law. Please, can you see that in your scripture? This is not Brother Steve's word. This is the word of God. Let not that man think that he will receive anything of God. He is wavering. He is unstable in his ways. Doubt. I have faith today. I don't have faith tomorrow. That day's faith is cancelled. So you cannot really, really say that I've been waiting on God for five months. No. If you have doubted for four months, I'm sorry, you only waited on God for one month. Am I communicating today? Anybody yes, with me? Yes, sir. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let him not think he will receive anything from God. God doesn't want the double-mindedness. Jesus speaking, he said, no man can serve God and mammon. <laughs> you can't say, no, I'm trying to balance the two. No, you are either loyal to one and hate the other. And if you love mammon, you hate God, even though you don't want to acknowledge it. Jesus is the one telling you, you cannot serve God and mammon. Two of them cannot hold the same place in your life. One must be exalted and the other down. Many people say, I'm trying to balance it out. You can't. Serving is absolute. Praise God. Hallelujah. I pray you receive what I'm saying today. Yes, sir. Lord Jesus. Why did you doubt? Luke chapter 8. Some people, the word uh -huh. stolen from them, the enemies of faith. The word does not rest. The word does not rest. Luke chapter 8, verse, verse 4. I read from verse 4 down. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns. And the thorn sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground and sprang up 
and bear fruit an hundredfold. And when he said these things, he cried. He cried out loud. He that had ears to hear, let him hear. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him, saying, what might this parable be? Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. I saw the hand of God upon me. And his disciples asked him, what might this parable be? And he said, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parable that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand. Then he explained the parable. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Like I'm preaching to you right now, I'm releasing the word of God. This is the seed that I'm sowing into your heart. What's going to happen from this word that's going to come? He said, those by the wayside are they that hear, they commit the devil and take it away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. So the devil can steal the word and it doesn't produce any result. And many times you are around, but it's like the word does not work for you. Why? It does not land. The word is stolen from your heart. Secondly, he said, they on the rock are they, which when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root. Oh, is someone listening today? These ones, they receive the word with joy. Yes, Lord, I'm ready for it. The service, miracle service. Whoa, glory to God. It's going to happen today. No roots for which for a while they believe. And in the time of temptation, fall away. No roots. This is why I tell you, I'm not quick to pray for you. I bring you in for Bible study. Bible study is where the roots are being formed. You have roots that when prayer comes, it can last. Am I communicating? Many don't have yes, roots. They receive the word with joy. And then when the first temptation comes, they fall away. They fall away. They fall away. Many people fall away. So you must have roots for the word to rest. Then when temptation comes, it's like a man who builds on a solid rock. The wind will come. The waters will come. The rain will come. The fire will come. His foundation is sure. Verse 14. And that which fell among thorns are they, listen carefully, are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. Oh my God. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying today? Yes, sir. Amen. The cares of this life, the pleasures of life. I will not kill myself. I need to relax and be taken care of. I'm not saying it's wrong. But when it comes to the point of choking the word of God that you have received, the cares and riches, pleasures of life. There's a time for everything, but if every time is pleasures of this life, it will choke and the word will not reach perfection. Verse 15, which I believe are my so many people. So many people say hallelujah. 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 Come on now. Hallelujah. But that on the good ground, that on the good ground are they, which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. They keep it. They ponder on the word. They meditate on the word. They confess the word. They pray the word. And with patience, 
not saying, but uh, my neighbor has just testified. Why am I not testifying? No, my neighbor, I'm happy for you. I thank God for what God is doing in your life. But I know that mine is being cooked. I'm meditating on it. I'm prophesying my word. I'm praying on my word. I'm guarding it. I'm tending to my garden, the garden of my heart. And I know that with patience, I will produce fruit. The one that fell on good ground, which in an honest and good heart, they are not pretentious towards the world. They, are, they have an honest heart. When they don't understand, they ask questions publicly or privately. Please bring perspective to this aspect that you, you I want to know it carefully. And then they receive with a good heart, humble heart, not pompous in thinking. They are humble enough to receive the seed of the word of God. They have heard the word. They keep it. They keep it. They keep it. They record it. They keep it. Once in a while, when things are not looking like it should, they bring out the word and they look on the word, looking onto the perfect law of liberty. As they behold, they become. But we all, with an open face, behold holding us in the glass, the glory of the Lord. We are changed into the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of God. We are changed into the same image as we take the word and we keep it in the time of temptation. We bring out the word and focus on it. We take it back and keep it. In a time of delay, we bring out the word and focus on it. Applying the principle and saying we are with open face beholding us in the mirror the living word, the glory of God. We are changed. We are transformed. That is how your life begins to produce all the time. You are pro no tree, no tree produces just once, never. They produce continually. <laughs> they that are patient, they that are humble before the world, they produce continuously. They are continuously producing fruit. One word is what you need, not many words. But you've been blessed here. So you have what will burden upon you. Your fruit will be multiple. You will come, you will produce. He said he uh, in, in Psalms one that said like a tree planted. Blessed the man that walking out in the in the council of the ungodly, not standing in the way of sin and not seeing the seed of scornful. But his delight is in the word. Which word? The word you are receiving. His delight is on the word. The word which he has kept. The word which he has he has meditated on. His delight is in the word of the Lord. Upon the word does he meditate. Day and night. He meditates well day and night. Can I communicate in this evening? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Day yes, sir. and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Hey, la mokopata. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. This is God's word. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. But the ungodly are not so. They are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. They will not be in our midst. They cannot stand yeah. in our midst. The ungodly are not so. You can't compare my result with the result of the ungodly. Though they may have physical substance, it's only a matter of time. They will carry that substance and beg you. Say, please take. Let me partake of the joy you carry. Did you not hear when the disciples, the apostles, were, were manifesting the kingdom? They were laying hands on the people, and the people were receiving the baptism of the Spirit. A man called by Jesus looked and said, wow. And he brought money. He said, please give me this gift. Am I communicating today? Give me this gift. It's not for sale, sir. <laughs> not for sale, man. I walk it not in the counsel of your godly, 
nor stand in the way of sinner, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. His delight is upon the wall. Jesus is telling you, but they that that, that which fell on the good ground, which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, faith comes by hearing. Ooh, faith comes by hearing. They heard the word. They kept the word. They are producing fruit with patience. Ooh. When the mango season is over, it may look like the mango tree is unproductive. But just give me time, brother. Give me time, sister. It may look like I'm not productive right now. Give me time. Give me time. My season is about to come up. E, I've said this about our sisters. When a tree is filled with ripe fruit, it attracts stones. They are not trying to judge the tree. They are not trying to kill the tree. They are coming after the fruit. When your season comes, you see that people start to approach you. All manner of people start to come after you because it's time for marriage. But if you do shakara and miss that part, then the season will pass again. Then the next season comes. They start to gather. Am I coming? Yes, sir. Anybody getting anything from today? Yes, sir. The enemies of faith. Give me time. This year makes it 10 years in the faith. <laughs> For 10 years, many people did not know us. Why? We're keeping the word. We received the word in March 31st by Papa Kaya in 2012. That was when the word came. January 1st, the first word came. Al along the line, the second word came. The third word, the power word came. March 31st, the word came. I was meditating on the word, looking on the word, beholding the word. I started to change. I started to be transformed into the same image from glory to glory, even by the spirit of God. And now after 10 years, it looked 10 years, maybe too long. It looked long, but that was when the foundations were dull. And now it's said, now it's time to supply the world. Give me time, people. Say to yourself, give me time. It may look like I'm marking time, even, but when my season comes, ee, when I begin to produce my fruits, ee, and suddenly everybody wants to associate with you. Suddenly people want to say, I knew you when you were small. I knew you when you started. I knew you when you had no customers for your business. I knew you when you were struggling. I knew you. Just give me time. This is not all there is to me. Give me time. Give me time. Give me time. Give me time. Our brother is here, Charles. Back in the day when we have fellowship and then, you know, we preach powerful sessions, you know, but the people we invite don't even show up. Sometimes we will offer to pay people. God just God will feed you. Then nobody shows up. He, and he gets so mad. Like the world needs to hear this message. I said, don't worry, we are on track. We are on track. We are not out of alignment. We are just digging our foundation. We preach so powerfully to empty seats. And he says, this is wrong. What can we do to get people to hear this? No, because if we had made moves based on our own timeline, we would have sustained by our own energy. But when it was time of the Holy Ghost, and after the time, he came and said, so it's time for an occasion. It's time to open up for the compelling power of the Spirit to begin to pull people from different parts of the world. And then, the Holy Ghost begins to sustain the movement. Are we doing anything different? No. Are we preaching a different message? No. So when the time of your appearance shall come, you won't need to do anything different. Ha! Ah, some of you stand in the mirror and you are preaching to your mirror. You are speaking words. You are prophesying to the mirror. It looks like nothing is there. The only audience you have are the angels. Very soon, you will stand on the platform of the world. And the thousands of people, as you pointed to the mirror, so shall you point to people. And there will be someone to respond and receive. Give me time. 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 This is not all there is to me. No. Just give me time. So don't be hard on yourself. Many of my peers went ahead of me. Five years in, they, they went ahead. And it looked like I was marking time. But when the Lord said it's time, whoo, in less than a year or two years, 
I was able to overtake many people who have gone years ahead. Why? Energy of the spirit. That was why Elijah could just be jogging normal pace and overtake the fastest chariots in the land. Why? Energy of the spirit. Give me time. Anybody blessed us far? Give me time. Yes, sir. Give me Amen. time. Oh, yes. The last enemy of faith Amen. that I want to touch on before I call it the night is stronghold. 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 Stronghold of the mind. Mindset. Stronghold of the mind. Stronghold. Somebody say stronghold. Hello. Stronghold. Are we there? Stronghold. 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 First Corinthians or Second Corinthians chapter 10, quickly. That's my final point. Then I hand over the mic. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. How do you do that? Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in a, a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing it into captivity. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. You see that? Where? The first thing is casting down imagination. I taught you about imagination. I taught you about the voices, the, the, the good, the bad. It brings imagination. Just they show you a picture and they start to seek some things. Your imagination. And they're bringing into captivity every thought. Every thought bringing into captivity. Every thought that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. It is your responsibility to apply the weapons. To shut down this imagination. You must have gone through something for so long that you might think this is all that you have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stronghold. Casting it down. The thoughts come, you shut it down. What if I do it and fail? Shut it down. What if I don't survive it? Shut that thought down. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. What has God said concerning this matter? You respond to that thought. Align with God's plan and purposes or be shut down. Casting down imagination, every thought, every imagination that does not glorify God, shut it down. Cast it down. It is your responsibility. God is not going to do that for you. God is bringing the word of God to you so that you know what to do. It is your responsibility to cast down every imagination that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Everything that tries to compete with God. God has spoken in your life. Some thoughts come to speak as well. You cast it down. God is king here. So when I enter a place, I lift my hand and say, Gee, I declare over my family, Jesus is king. Every other thing that I try to exalt is shut down immediately. I don't even give it room to breathe on my head. Many times we think on these things and we allow it grow and grow wild. Shut it down, people. Shut it what? Down. It is your responsibility 
you are equipped with the word of God. You have God's word in your heart. You have his word, his prophetic words over you. Use it to fight the good warfare. So when the idea comes, everybody is getting blessed. You are not getting blessed. Oh, you show, you respond to it. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. I walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of water. My leaves do not wither. My leaves do not work. It does not wither. We've dealt for five weeks the topic on faith. Every, every week, different dimensions, different perspective. Where am I getting the supply? I'm connected to an unending flow. I can't run out. Never. If I can, if we want to go on this topic to the end of the year, I can go. Right now, I have nothing in my mind to cover for another two weeks or even one week. But I have my supply, the Holy Ghost. He will supply as need be. I was in fellowship and he said, the last week, deal with the enemies of faith. And he started to give me doubt, stronghold, words stolen from the heart of the people. And just right now, fear. It is your responsibility. Can you unmute your mic and say, it is my responsibility. 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 Don't allow the enemy mesmerize you and make you It is my responsibility. Pass down imagination. Everybody on mute or mic, let's do some confessions and I'll, I'll call it a night. Are we ready? Yes, yes, sir. Pray in the Holy Ghost for two minutes. Pray in the Holy Ghost for two minutes. in the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. I declare. Are we on the same page? In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we pray. We are confessing. I declare. I declare that it is my responsibility. It is my responsibility. To cast down every imagination. And every high thing. That exalted itself against the knowledge of God in my life. Against the knowledge of God in the name of Jesus. I bring it to captivity. I bring into captivity every thought, every thought, in the obedience of Christ. I bring into captivity every thought, every thought, to the obedience of Christ. To the obedience of Christ. I know who I am. I know who I am. I'm not a mistake. I'm not a mistake. I'm loved by the Father. I'm loved by the Father. I'm sent by the Son. I'm sent by the Son. And I'm equipped by the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. Say that again. I see an anointing on that. I'm loved by the Father. I'm loved by the Father. I'm sent by the Son. 
I am sent by the Son. And I am equipped by the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You believe it? Shout a big hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Celebrate Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you glory, we give you praise. I'm equipped by the oh, I love it. I need to, I need to, I need to make where are my post creators here? Timmy Lane. I need a post that says, I'm loved by the Father, I'm sent by the Son, and I'm equipped by the Holy Ghost. Oh, Makadia. Oh, I need to take this into another measure of confession because I feel the anointing staring up as I say so. But I'm just gonna say thank you. And I thank God. Let's give our lift our voice and give him thanks for uh, a month full of the subject of faith. I know you are fired up in your spirit, ready to get the word that's going to come on Saturday. Lift your voices and just give him thanks. Give him glory for the word of God that has come with such power for the revelation of the Holy Ghost. Give him glory. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him praise. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the spirit of the word. Thank you for light. Thank you for understanding. We give you praise. We exalt your name. Thank you, Father. Precious name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Please, I want you to unmute your mics in one minute. Timile, please, I beg your pardon. I'm just gonna I'm gonna hand over very shortly. I want us to pray concerning the program on, on, on Saturday. Let's pray that the power and the fire of God's spirit will, will be present to bring healing, deliverance, bring the word of power of the Holy Ghost who will be made manifest on that day. Can we lift our voices and pray and pray for our meeting on Saturday? Father, we pray for the weather, the clear weather.